In this video we're going to look at how to use Excel to create an index number series uh, from a set of data. Now, an index number shows the percentage change in a variable relative to a given base. So it's often used for making comparisons and for showing the growth in a particular variable. So here we have some data showing monthly sales measured in thousands of pounds of a particular product from January 2015 until May 2016. Now I want to create an index number series of this data. Now the first thing I need to do is to decide what is going to be the base value uh, from which I'll be making the comparisons. Uh, this is completely arbitrary. Uh, it depends where you want to compare the other variables to. Um, the calculations are essentially the same regardless. So here I've decided first of all to use the January 2016 figure as my base and that's indicated here by putting January 2016 equals 100 because as we'll see the base always has a value of 100. So having chosen the base we then simply need to find each other value as a percentage of the base. So we can put a formula in to do the first one and then simply copy to do the rest. So let's put the first one in as equals to start the formula. So we want this value here as a percentage of the base. So that means dividing by the base figure and then times in by 100. But of course, there's one very important step to do first here before I copy this formula down, and that's to make the C14 reference absolute. So that, of course, it always divides by that value. We want the numerator C2 to be relative so that it changes to C3, C4 and so on, but the C14 needs to be fixed. So I use the F4 function key shortcut to put the dollar signs in, times by 100, and I will have my first index number. Now index numbers by convention usually have just one decimal place, so I'm going to use the decrease decimal button here to reduce that. Remember, of course, that's not actually cutting any decimal places off. It's simply changing the display. So the first one is 91.5. Now if I use the fill box here, and drag down to copy to the rest. There's my other values. So notice that, of course, that the base is 100 because, of course, that's calculated by 61.2 divided by 61.2 of course is 1 times 100 gives you 100. That's why the base is always 100. Now the other values relate back to the base and show the percentage change. So for example here in April 2016 we have 105.7. That means that the value of sales here was 5.7 percent higher than in the base year. Similarly the look at this one here 116 sales here were 16 percent higher than in that base year. If you are comparing one particular index number, say this one, with the base, then the difference is the percentage change. That, however, is not the case if you're not starting from the base. If I compare, say, this one here with this one, then the difference between them is not the percentage change because I'm not starting from 100. What we need to do is to calculate the actual percentage change here in the usual way by dividing the change by what it was to start with and times in by 100. So I'm going to do that here to calculate the growth rate from month to month in this index, in these sales. So I'll begin with the first one here. I can't do it for here because I don't have obviously um, December's figure for 2014. So I'm going to put the first growth is from January to February here. I'm going to put that here alongside February. We need, a first, first of all, the difference between the two. Now, of course, I want that to be worked out first, so I need some brackets here to make sure that that difference, that subtraction, to find the difference is calculated first. That is then divided by the starting value. I want to find the proportional increase here and then turn it into a percentage. So that should give me the percentage growth from January to February here. OK, 
again I'll put that down to one decimal place so there was a 13.4% fall here in sales from January to February now I can copy down here and do all the rest and there are the monthly growth rates sometimes negative when sales go down sometimes positive when it goes up remember of course you can't find these growth rates by simply finding the difference between the index numbers that only works if you're starting from 100 so you can see here for example that here the difference is 17.8 percent which of course is what we get here so here starting from 100 we can find the growth rate as the difference but otherwise we have to work it out as we've just done now as I remarked the choice of base is arbitrary it depends from which period you want to make comparisons so let's show how we can calculate another index number series for this data using a different base this time I'll use January 2015 as my base again the calculations are very simple I can do simply find each other value as a percentage of that base value so I'm going to do the first one and then simply copy it for the rest so we want this one here divided by the base which is the same of course in this case again let's fix that base make it absolute and then times by 100 that of course gives me 100 because it's the base now I'll copy that down to do all the rest and then move them to one decimal place as before so there we have another index number series based on this data now this time with January 2015 as the, as the base obviously the figures are different but of course the the way the variable is changing the actual uh, change in the variable from month to month has not been changed none of these figures have actually been altered we're simply using a different base and we can confirm that if I calculate the monthly growth rate from this index number series now and we'll see that they're identical to this one because of course the variable has not been changed in any way the actual data has not been modified so again I'll do this with the first one so it's the actual change use brackets of course divided by what it was to start with and then times by 100 to change that proportion into a percentage and of course we get exactly the same as before and if I copy that down again I'll get exactly the same values as here of course because the data is still the same notice of course again with this one we could simply have taken the difference because it was starting from 100 so it is a fall of 13.4 percent but for the others we have to work them out as we've done here so that shows you how to create an index number series uh, using Excel.